Hello, my name is Joel Z. Williams. I am the Poor People's Advocate. Today I want to talk to you about Bovera Bassiana. Now this, I'm going to say it one more time, Bovera Bassiana. This is a uh, naturally occurring soil-based pathogen. It's a fungus um, that occurs naturally in soil. And um, it, it, it really, we, we first became aware of it back in the 1800s. Uh, it was an Italian researcher. His, his name was uh, Agostino Bassi. Um, es essentially, we, they were trying to raise silkworms and they kept having this problem with silkworms coming up with what is known as white muscadine. Uh, syndrome, which is essentially, uh, think of a, uh, like, like if you took an insect and you dipped it into uh, sugar, uh, what do they call that, uh, powdered sugar. And, and it, co a coat, it would coat the entire exoskeleton of the insect and make it, uh, render, render it unable to, to asphyxiate. It couldn't, because arthropods breathe through their shell, uh, also known as a cuticle. Uh, so if that waxy membrane is, is uh, dried up through some kind of desiccant, then they, they lose that ability to, to breathe, essentially, to, to convert oxygen. Um, but this, this is a naturally occurring fungus, and the reason I'm so excited about it is the uh, Penn State University in, in Pennsylvania is, is now researching it as what, what they call a biological, uh, it's, it's got a fancy name, endopathogen. And, and that means that this is a naturally occurring thing as opposed to using chemicals or, or uh, other uh, insecticides that have potentially adverse reaction to children, small children. Uh, you don't want the, the uh, pyrethroids that are currently on the market today. The things that the, the PCOs come out to your house and spray uh, are potentially hazardous to your children or your dogs, whereas a fungus like this, a naturally occurring fungus, would you know, of course the research is still being done, but it would seem to be that humans would, would have no adverse reaction. So this is very exciting news. And uh, like I said, it, it has been used very successfully. This, this endopathogen has been used very successfully commercially. Um, and has um, F the Food and Drug Administration here in America has approved its use uh, commercially, but has not so far approved it for residential use. And that's what this research in Penn State is doing. And they're doing studies to see if this would be uh, viable, that we could get it to switch over to, to uh, uh, residential usage. So I'm very excited about that. And I also wanted to tell you a couple components about it, a couple of details about it that I think most people don't know. Um, the, the pathogen is, it doesn't kill them right away. It takes three to seven days to, to the, the bug actually has to make contact with the spore. Uh, but think of the potential. Here you, you would have the capability to have an endopathogen naturally occurring, uh, maybe convert it to a powder or maybe even a spray, put it in a spray bottle and a person could have that and they could literally treat their couch or their, their, their sofa or their, their bed and spray everything almost in a preemptive strike. Those spores, those fungal spores could lay there dormant for six months to a year. And uh, as soon as the bed bug crawls across it, it, it would you know start that start that process. Right now, the downside, one of the things that I, I see is going to be a potential hurdle is that uh, the Bovera virus, uh, uh, bacillum, it takes, it's the this fungus, it actually requires 92% humidity in order to work with reliable effectiveness. So this works really good in tropical situations with, they, they use it on bananas now. Uh, I think they've done, done it with some maize, I think beans in, in India. But uh, you know, a lot of places here in the U.S. 
and, and many parts of, of the developed world aren't human, don't have that, that level of humidity all the time. So that, that's one of the potential hurdles they're going to have to overcome. And I think we don't know what the unintended consequences are. You know, we don't want to introduce these things into an environment willy-nilly and then find out later that they have some secondary or tertiary negative effect that uh, maybe they, you know, pe people who keep birds or uh, reptiles as pets, um, you know, that these things have some kind of ha adverse affection, uh, effect on them. So we, we're still in the infancy infancy of the research and development phase, but I'm very excited about it and I'll keep you guys posted with updates and, and uh, show you how that research is going up at Penn State. Again, my name is Joel Z. Williams. I am the Poor People's Advocate. You will recognize me by my white hat, but you will know me by my virtuous ways. Thank you.